Wheaties presents Dangerous Assignment. On stage tonight from Hollywood, Dangerous Assignment, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment is going to end up with me depending for my life on my own cigarette lighter. Morning, Commissioner. Get out your pith helmet, Steve. You're leaving for Arabia on the next plane. Arabia? Now, look. My days as a camel jockey are over. Don't worry. You won't be riding any camels unless you find some carrying oil in their humps. Oil? What's the deal? That's the deal. A hundred thousand barrels of it. Missing. Look, since when have we been playing nursemaid to oil companies? This is a lot bigger than any oil company, Steve. Three days ago, the Sheik's inspector found a discrepancy in the figures of one of the oil companies, the Five Star. Unless the matter is cleared up to the Sheik's satisfaction, we may lose the entire concession. Oh, who do I talk to over there? Mr. Williams, the field manager of Five Star. Their headquarters are in Marani, near the Persian Gulf. Steve, get over there and find out what happened to that oil. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. I have a recipe for you. Now, it's real simple, so you needn't bother writing it down. Take four or five people, or as many as your family holds... Add an equal number of cereal bowls, pour in Wheaties, uh, into the bowls, that is. Now garnish with milk and fruit and sweeten to taste. This recipe is very good for breakfast or lunch or as a little something before bed, depending on when you decide to make it. Now, the reason it's so good is because the 100% whole wheat Wheaties flakes and the 100% nice people you use always blend perfectly. I do hope you'll try my favorite recipe soon, but be sure you use genuine Wheaties and real people. Now, here is Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. Yeah, this is going to be a breeze. All I have to do is fly halfway around the world to a sweltering spot in Arabia, take care of a little matter like finding a mere 100,000 barrels of missing oil. And I've got a strong hunch that somewhere along the line I'll run into someone who'll say, drop dead to me and mean it. It's Thursday when I get to Marani, and Williams, the field manager of Five Star Oil, is waiting for me in his office, together with his assistant, a guy named Haroon. Well, I'll tell you all I know, Mitchell, but uh, that isn't much. On our last shipment, the Sheik's inspector claimed we were 10,000 barrels short of what their figures showed we'd pumped out of the ground. The sheik gets royalty on every barrel, so he was pretty sore about it. Yeah, I can imagine, Williams. Uh, Haroon here can probably tell you more about this than I can. I was on a business trip to Cairo when it all came up. As my assistant, uh, Haroon was in charge here. I see. What uh, happened after the discrepancy was spotted, Haroon? Uh, in order to pacify the sheik, we passed the matter off as an error in our bookkeeping and paid the royalty. But then we started investigating quietly and discovered that over the past month, there has been a loss of 100,000 barrels. Well, uh, tell me, what happens to the oil from the time it leaves the wells until it's shipped out of here? Well, the wells are north of here. The oil's pumped down here to Morani through a patrol pipeline. There's a checker on each end of the line. Uh, then, as I get it, on this particular shipment, your checker at the fields checked a certain amount of oil into the pipeline, but your checker at this end checked out 10,000 barrels less. Yes. It was his first day on the job. Oh? Well, what happened to the regular checker? Oh, you mean Yusef. The evening before, he died in a cafe brawl. Oh, that's very interesting. Where did this fight take place? At the Oasis Club. Yusef went there regularly. He was very fond of the dancing girl, Sarida, and very jealous of her. Mm -hmm. She is believed to be the reason for the fight. I see. Well, I think I'll go over to the Oasis Club and see what I can turn up there. I'll see you around, gentlemen. Good evening, 
Effendi. Welcome to the Oasis Club. You would like a table? That uh, dancing girl out there, is her name Sarita? Oh, yes, that is Sarita. Is she not beautiful? Yeah. I guess she's not afraid of catching cold, either. I do not understand, Effendi. Oh, skip it. Will you tell her I'd like to talk to her when she's through with her dance? At once, Effendi. Her table is over in the corner. If you will wait there, I will send her to you. Thank you. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was Sarita's table. Oh, but it is. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Are you a friend of Sarita's? Mm, ever so. And you? Well, I'm uh, sort of a friend of a friend of hers. Yeah, I see. Oh, here she comes now. Mm-hmm. You are the one who wished to see Sarita? Yeah. My name's Steve Mitchell. I see the two of you have already met. Well, not officially. This is Trifless. I delighted. And what do you wish of Sarita, Mr. Mitchell? A uh, little information about your dead boyfriend, Yusuf. Many men are in love with Sarita, Mr. Mitchell. It is a pity, but it is fate. Yusuf was merely one of them. I see. Well, was it fate that killed him? I do not understand. How did it happen? It was during my dance. I heard sudden shouts. Then the lights went out. Mm, such a pity. I might have saved Yusuf had I acted more quickly. What do you mean, Trifless? Well, I was standing over at the bar when the fighting started. But just as I got to Yusuf, the lights went out and there he was, lying on the floor with a knife in his back. Such a pity. He was a very dear friend of mine. I miss him greatly. Did uh, Yusuf ever mention his job with a five-star to you, Sarita? No. Sarita is not interested in such things. Oh? What sort of things is Sarita interested in? Her beauty. Modest little daisy, aren't you? Modesty is for the unlovely. <laughs> is she not completely charming, Mitchell? Well, that's one word for it. Uh, this fight that killed Yusef took place four nights ago, right? Mm, let me see. If, uh, yes, yes, that is correct. I remember because the next morning I made a business trip to the coast. What kind of business you in, Trifless? Mm, several little enterprises. This trip involved one of them, a truck line which I operate. What do you haul? Oil. From here in Marani to the town of Quatif on the Persian Gulf. Hmm. You don't haul for the Five Star Oil Company by any chance, do you? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. They are one of my accounts. I see. Oh, thanks for the conversation, Sarita. Trifless. It was very interesting. This swindle has undoubtedly been going on for some time. Yes. If the missing total adds up to 100,000 barrels... Now, look, suppose all the oil has reached this end of the line. Could amounts of it be stolen after that? Why, it would be very difficult. Hmm. What happens to the oil after it gets here? It is pumped into large storage tanks. Are those tanks checked regularly? Fairly regularly. Well, then, after that, the oil is pumped into trucks and taken to the town of Quatif on the Persian Gulf. Why, yes. I I believe I forgot to tell you that. I picked it up. Is it possible that a couple of extra truckloads could be slipped out without the company knowing it? Absolutely impossible. I, I checked the trucks out myself. I see. Uh, incidentally, a guy named Trifless runs that truck line, doesn't he? Why, why, yes, he does. You know much about him? Why, of course. I'm sure he's a man of character. How do you know? Uh, Trifless... Is my brother in law. Oh. Hello, Mitchell. Mm. Turned up anything so far? Oh, nothing except a bunch of loose ends, Williams. That's too bad. Means my job this mess isn't cleared up. It means your whole company and all the other oil companies, too. Uh, look, you say this pipeline is patrolled. Yes. By plane, every day. Who's your pilot? A guy named Dean. Matter of fact, he should be getting ready to take off right now. Well, call the airfield and tell Dean to wait for me. I'd like to go along for the ride. Lots of sand down there, Dean. You can say that again, Mitchell. Mm. A lot of sand and a lot of pipes. And this is about the most monotonous job in the world. Yeah, I can imagine. 
You uh, keep this baby at a pretty low altitude, don't you? Have to, so I can spot leaks on the line. Look, uh, could anyone tap into the pipeline without your spotting it? I don't see how. Even if they tried it at night, I fly so low I could spot the tire tracks the next day. And you can see yourself, there's not a track in that sand for miles around. Yeah. Hey, getting kind of dark. I guess waiting for me made you later than usual, huh? Oh, a little, but that's okay. The water over there, is that the Persian Gulf? Yeah. How far from here is it? Oh, eight, ten miles. What are those ruins over there on the coast? That's what they call the lost Mm. city of Enzac. Several thousand years old. Great spot for archaeologists. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I thought I saw a light over there. Probably a reflection off the water. Nobody's been around there for at least six months. The last expedition was from London, I think. They still have their equipment stored in a warehouse over in Quatif down the coast. Oh, yeah? Hey, just a hunch, but I think I'll take a trip over to Quatif as soon as you get this buggy back home. It's night when I get to Quatif. I nose around until I locate the warehouse right on the waterfront and all boarded up. The sign on it says Royal Institute of Archaeology, London. I nose around some more and find out that the warehouse is owned by an outfit called Gulf Enterprises. I head for their office. I wonder if you could tell... Well, my old friend Trifliss. Hmm? Oh, Mitchell, is it not? It is. Yes, but of course, we met at the Oasis Club in Marani only last evening. The beautiful Sarida... Yes, my compliments to the beautiful Sarida. Uh, don't tell me that you run golf enterprises. Why not? <laughs> Looks like you're a pretty enterprising gent. A truck line, a warehouse. Warehouse? Oh, yes, the one at the waterfront. I had almost forgotten the place. I have not been near there in months. That uh, archaeology outfit rents it from you, huh? Yes. They still have much of their equipment stored there. They send me a check every few months from London. Uh, why'd you ask? Oh, just curious. You seem to have your finger in quite a few pies, Trifliss. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. You truck oil here to the coast for the five-star outfit. You also happen to own a warehouse that's rented to an outfit who's been poking around in some ruins up the coast. And? And you also happen to be the brother-in-law of Haroon, the assistant manager of Five Star, to say nothing of being a friend of the dead checker, Yusef. This is all quite accurate and interesting, Mitchell. But what does it prove? It doesn't prove anything, Trifliss, but it sure sounds like a nice, cozy arrangement. I'll be seeing you. I head back to the warehouse and try to get in, but it's boarded up tight. I circle around it to the water. The back end of the building rests on a pier. Then I spot something under the pier, a good-sized barge. I climb aboard, and a strong smell hits me. Oil. Now I know I'm getting warm. Then I hear a sound behind me. I spin around and spot three gents in white robes, and just one look at them tells me they don't want to shake hands. I swing on the nearest one. <coughs> he goes down. I hit the water. Start swimming. Do not let him get away. Hey, careful, I didn't think of them for guns. I've got to get underwater, but just as I start to dive... Now, here's something you'll be glad to hear. There aren't any rules. You can eat Wheaties any old way you happen to like them. It's all we could do. Every time we think up a nice, easy rule, like putting milk and fruit on Wheaties, some guy out in Seattle is caught using cream. If we decide on strawberries, sure, shooting people start smuggling a banana to the table. One time we made a rule about Wheaties and peaches, and we found a southern lady eating Wheaties right out of the box. We say Wheaties for breakfast, And women put them in their husband's lunch pail. We say eat them at bedtime, you take them on picnics. (laughs) You're wonderful. So, like I say, there aren't any rules. Well, uh, maybe just two. Eat Wheaties the way you like them. And buy them at your grocery anytime you need them. Now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Steve Mitchell. There he is, floating in the water. Stop the launch. Abura, Abdul, 
Pull him out of the water. Easy. Easy. So, put him down on deck. Oh, oh my head. Oh, he's still alive. You want to bet? You're lucky. This is lucky. It appears the bullet merely creased the skull. Well, if it's all the same to you, I like to part my hair on the other side. Hey, look, who are you? Lieutenant Samka of the police. We yeah. heard shots and came here in the launch to investigate. You were floating in the water uh, about to go under. Well, thanks for fishing me out. It's now my turn to ask questions. Who are you? Steve Mitchell. Steve Mitchell. Ah, yes, a government agent from the United States. You've got big ears, Lieutenant. It is my business. Start the launch, Abdul. Yes, you are here to investigate the oil scandal. Or is the purpose of your visit rather to whitewash the company involved? That's a pretty bad guess, Samka. Hey, where are we going? Back to the dock. Well, it's been a short acquaintance, but a happy one, Lieutenant. Thanks again. Oh, uh, do not think that our acquaintance will be ended when we reach the dock, Mitchell. I will be seeing you again soon. Oh? Yes, indeed. I will make a point of it, Mitchell. I go back to my hotel and change in the dry clothes. My head's throbbing plenty, but I know I've still got a big night's work ahead of me. I phone the commissioner and ask him to check on the Royal Institute of Archaeology in London. An hour later, he calls me back and tells me the phonies, it's an outfit. So there's no record of them in London. Next, I call Williams, the field manager. What's on your mind, Mitchell? Ever hear of the lost city of Inzac, Williams? Sure. Bunch of ruins up the coast away. Why? I want to take a trip up there in a hurry. How do those ruins tie into the deal? That's what I want to find out. Can you get your pilot to fly me up there? Tonight? Tonight. There's no place to land around there. That's why I'll need a parachute. Parachute? You gonna jump? You know a quicker way of getting down? No, but... Well, okay, Mitchell. If you think it'll accomplish anything, go ahead. It's probably too late as far as I'm concerned, though. What do you mean? Just got a call from the president of the company. He wants me to meet him in Cairo. I got a strong hunch I'm gonna get canned. So I guess you are on your own. But be careful, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. How about the plane? I'll call Dean right now and tell him to get out of the airfield and warm it up. He'll be ready for you in a couple of hours. Sorry to pull you out of the sack, Dean. That's okay. We're just about warmed up. Here, they sent this parachute for you. Thanks. You know, it's a long time since I've had one of these babies on. Mitchell! Huh? Mitchell. Oh, Lieutenant Samka. Yes, Lieutenant Samka. Where do you think you're going? On a little plane trip. Look, are you my official bodyguard or something? In this case, I am your official fellow passenger. Oh? Well, I don't think you like this trip, Samka. It involves a parachute jump. Oh, then I must provide myself with the necessary equipment. Hey, that's my parachute. It was your parachute. Now it is mine. Look. If you want to go on this trip, get your own. Oh, uh, thank you, but I prefer yours. It, it might be safer. Oh, you don't trust me at all, do you? Uh, frankly, no. Well, what am I supposed to use for the jump? A beach umbrella? I think there's another parachute in the hangar, Mitchell. Okay. Well, I'll be with you in a minute. Well, as long as you two guys are determined to jump, you picked a good night for it. Look at that moon. Yeah. Aren't those the ruins just ahead? Uh-huh. We're a little to the windward of them. You should land pretty close. This about the right spot, Dean? Any time. Well, see you on the ground, Samka. Here goes. I bail out. The air rushes by me while I jerk at the ripcord. The chute streams out behind me. I start praying. <laughs> and she snaps open and yanks me upright. I look down at the moonlit desert and then... Samka, but his chute didn't open. I turned my head away, and then I realized his chute was supposed to be my chute, and I'm pretty sure that somebody has made sure it wouldn't open. A minute later, I'm on the ground, right beside the ruins. There's nothing I can do for Samka. 
I find the building better preserved than the rest. There are tracks leading in and out. I go in, and the smell of oil hits me right in the face. There's a trap door in the floor. I start to open it. Then I freeze. Footsteps outside. I duck back into the shadows. Hold it right there. Huh? Oh. Let me get my light on you. Well, well, if it isn't Haroon. Mitchell, what are you doing here? I guess I don't need to ask you the same question, Haroon. But you do not understand. I, I was merely... Save it, Haroon. Open that trap door. Trap door? Right there in front of you. I don't think we're going to find down below what will surprise either one of us. Mitchell, you must listen to me. Open it. Uh, very well. Uh, short flight of stairs and more oil smell. Okay, you go first. And remember, I've got you covered. Hey, pretty large basement for an old ruined building, isn't it? Yes, it seems to be. Okay, stay put while I flash my light around. Yeah, there it is. A small pipeline? Yeah, a small pipeline underground heading straight west toward the five-star pipeline. No wonder Dean couldn't spot anything from the air. Well... It was a pretty nice scheme, Haroon. Mitchell, Mitchell, I swear, even though he is my brother-in-law, I did not dream until now that he... What are you talking about? Why, why, my brother-in-law, Triflis. I realized that you suspected him, and it aroused my suspicions of him. I also found out he owned the warehouse that the expedition had rented. I came here to investigate. I realize now that your suspicions were justified. Look, as assistant field manager, you could have engineered the whole deal, and Triflis was in a good spot to help you. Now you're trying to pin the whole deal on him. No, 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 no. It is not true. You must believe me, Mitchell. I have had nothing to do with it. Come on, I've seen enough here. I'm going back to town and tell him about this underground pipeline, and you're coming with me. It won't work, Mitchell. Mitchell, a flashlight. Now you're trying to ease out of a tight spot by pretending Haroon is the boy, but it won't work. Now drop the gun, Mitchell. Williams, I said I... drop the gun. Okay. Now, kick it over towards me. That's a boy. I kind of figured you'd be hanging around in the shadows here somewhere, Williams. As soon as that parachute failed to open, I knew you were my boy. So you weren't wearing that chute, Mitchell. How'd you get up here so fast? I got a two-hour head start on a fast launch and waited here for you, just in case anything went wrong with my parachute gag. You know, I gotta hand it to you, you Williams. You had a pretty good scheme cooked up here. You organize a fake expedition to come up to these ruins. They run an underground pipeline over to the main line and tap it, and then you cart the oil away on barges from here. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad that Czech remind got himself killed in that fight when I was in Cairo. He's been covering for me. What's the matter, Williams? Wasn't Five Star paying you enough salary? Sure, 15000 a year. But 100,000 barrels of oil is worth a quarter million bucks, Mitchell. You figure it out. Oh. Uh. Right now, I'm trying to figure out what you're going to do with Haroon and me. I think you'll see the answer to that as soon as I get some stuff I've got upstairs. What stuff? Oh, just a couple of little items like rope and dynamite. <laughs> Some people are very lucky. They don't have to buy Wheaties. They just pitch a no-hit-no-run ball game or slam the apple out of the park, and they win a whole case of Wheaties. Take Ralph Kiner. He's probably still working on the last of the 54 home run cases he got last season with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ralph figures Wheaties are plenty okay. He told us, I don't think there's a breakfast dish anywhere that can beat milk, fruit, and Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. From that remark, I just figured that Mr. Kiner wouldn't even mind going out and buying his Wheaties if he had to. And I reckon you won't either. After all, it isn't much of a trip. Just down to the grocery. And now, here is the conclusion of Dangerous Assignment. Mitchell, what is he going to do? That's pretty obvious, Haroon. Wait. Hey. That valve in the pipe overhead. What? Here, give me a hand with it. We've got to get it open in a hurry. But I still don't understand. Help me open it. William's just going to tie us up here and then blow the whole works up. There. It is opening. Yeah. Come on, get the valve wide open. There. But, but what good will it do to flood this basement with oil? <coughs> those, those fumes. The fumes and the oil are the only things that can save us, Haroon. Wait, maybe, maybe we can follow the pipeline underground and escape that way. <coughs> no soap. They filled in the tunnel all around that pipe. Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell, the oil is ankle deep already. Good. 
Now, where's that cigarette lighter of mine? Lighter? Wait, Mitchell, wait! <coughs> Brother, you could cut these fumes with a knife. Okay, boys. Get up on the beam of my flashlight. Here we are, William. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Mitchell, what are you doing? Just giving the place a little oil bath, Williams. What have you got in your hand? Drop it! Oh, no, you drop that gun, Williams, right now. Are you crazy? I'll fill you so full of holes. Oh, no, you won't. This is a cigarette lighter. I'm holding it right next to this stream of oil. All I have to do is make a spark with it. This whole place will go up in flames so quick you'll never make it to that trap door. Cigarette lighters don't always light, Mitchell. Sorry, Buster. This is an Evans. It never misses. I'll give you just three seconds. I could kill you before you light it. Try it. One. Talking like a madman. Two. Wait! No! No! Stop the gun! Okay. Okay. Now come here. I want to use that rope you're carrying. Tie him up, Haroon. Look out, Mitchell, the knife! I'll take that lighter! Have a fist and step! Oh. My, my, my. Well, I guess there's one way of rubbing his nose in it. Well, come on, Haroon. Let's get him upstairs. Uh, he is covered with oil. Yeah. You got him? Yes. Up the steps with him. <laughs> These fumes, Mitchell, one spark would have turned this place into an inferno. You're telling me. Well, here we are. Set him down on the floor. All right. Now, come on. Let you and me get some fresh air before we keel over. Ah, uh, uh, that is better. Mitchell, I must say you have nerves of steel. Yeah? Right now they're creaking a little bit. I could use a cigarette. Uh, yes, of course. Here, I have one. Oh, thanks. How about a light? Oh, but uh, your cigarette lighter. Oh, that. I keep forgetting to get flints for it. It doesn't work. What? But I heard you say to Williams that... Yeah, that... Williams didn't know I didn't have any flint in it. Mitchell, you were just bluffing. Look. When you've got no cards, you've got a bluff. But a bluff is the best poker hand in the world as long as the opposition doesn't call you. And Williams didn't call. Now, how about a match? Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif, with music by Basil Adlam, and is produced and directed by Bill Carn. Join us again next Wednesday when Brian Donlevy, as Steve Mitchell, embarks on another dangerous assignment. And this is your Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen next Monday night to Frank Lovejoy and Nightbeat on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Going to bake a pie sometime soon? Make it with Crust Quick, the Betty Crocker pie crust mix. You know it's a tender, flaky crust that's at the bottom of every delicious pie, sure as you use Crust Quick. And so easy. Just add water to Crust Quick. Mmm, and what pie crust? Tender crust, tasty crust, rich, short, lovely crust, just like Betty Crocker makes. And you can make it. Just add water to Crust Quick. Crust Quick, the Betty Crocker pie crust mix. Tomorrow's family programs include The Aldriches and Father Knows Best on NBC.